a workstation that's built for abuse. Box builds systems designed to be ideal for rendering systems, servers for engineering, product design, architecture, VFX, animation, data science processing, and any demanding computational task. Using its global reseller network, it offers its systems and support across the world and has been considered one of the premium providers of workstation technology for a while. Today the CentOS along an Apex W class system built around the Intel Xeon W series CPU, a component that you wouldn't usually find in an ordinary office computer. What are the performance benefits of a system like this, and do they remotely justify the high cost? The Apex W3 is the lowest run of the W class systems that all use Intel Xeon W series processors and its associated C422 chipset. A typical starting point for an Apex W class system is $5,389, and, for that outlay, you get an 8 cores, 16 thread, Xeon W2255 processor, 16 GB of DDR4 2666 MHz ECC memory, an NVIDIA Quadro P2200 graphics card, and a 512 GB M.2 NVMe SSD. And, Windows 10 Pro comes pre installed. It is possible to instead choose a quad-core Xeon W CPU, less storage, and a less impressive video card through the box system customization for less, but we'd debate if those lesser specifications would be considered a true workstation. The review machine was, as you might expect embued with many enhancements, and would cost more than $10,000, without the inclusion of a mouse, keyboard or screen. It is possible to specify a multi-GPU Apex W3 system with 512GB of RAM that is easily more than $30,000, for those that are willing to pay that much for an extreme compute platform. The case box used for the smaller systems is unusual in several respects, although it's still technically an ATX form factor design. For starters, this system opens from what would be the wrong side on more mini tower systems. With the motherboard faces left to right with the ports on the right, the opposite of the typical PC, with the CPU at the bottom and not the top. However, you can't easily see the CPU, since the PSU is also at the bottom, on its side, and obscures a large part of the motherboard that sits behind it. That's not ideal. Access is easy as two retained thumb screws release the side panel, but be prepared to support the side when you slide it free. Box used steel of a thickness that we'd only previously experienced in a tank museum, making it a hefty item. That this case is robustly built is a massive understatement, it's a piece of brutalist architecture, with a computer living inside. It's more than 3mm thick in places. One slight oddity is that there are two small holes on the top of the case, designed to be the mounting point for an optional handle that wasn't included in our review model. Surely, some trim with the box logo to cover up the holes would be more elegant than leaving them exposed. Air is drawn in at the front my three fans, two being 120mm and 180mm. One of the 120mm is attached to a radiator that provides water cooling to the CPU, but not the GPU. As a rule, heating air as it enters the system is considered a poor strategy by system builders. Box should redesign the case to put the radiator on the ceiling, so that it removes the heat from the CPU and pushes out of a dorsal vent, not passes it on to the rest of the system, including the GPU. The placement of the PSU also makes accessing the M.2 and memory slots on the motherboard challenging, without removing it. But the top half of the motherboard where all the PCI slots are located is easily accessible, even if attaching power cables might be fiddly. There are no locations for optical drives, tape storage or externally accessible mechanisms, so any of that technology you require will need connecting via USB or B network accessible. There are two 3.5 conventional drive bays, should you still be a fan of spinning rust. The specification of the Apex W3 system provided was impressive for numerous reasons, but let's first talk about the platform in general, and what it can offer. Box chose the Asus WSC422 Sage 10G motherboard, which uses the Intel C422 chipset designed for LGA2066 socketed processors. The review hardware has an Intel Xeon W2295 18-core CPU installed, but cheaper Intel Xeon W chips are available starting with the underwhelming 4-core Xeon W2223. All the Xeon W series support hyperthreading, enabling the review machine's 18 cores to process 36 threads simultaneously, with core clocks of 3 GHz, turbo boosting to 4.8 GHz. The W2295 is the most powerful Cascade Lake W series processor that Intel makes, although it has the lowest core clock speed. 
the reduced clock is to avoid overheating, something that can happen with that many cores running simultaneously. It also has a 165 watt TDP thermal design power because it's only constructed on a 14 nanometers process and not the 7 nanometers lithography process that AMD is now deploying for its Ryzen line. There are 8 DDR4 memory slots, allowing for a maximum of 512 gigabytes of EEC RAM should you wish to spend north of $6,500 on memory alone. In the review machine, all 8 were occupied with 8GB sticks, providing 64GB of EEC RAM at 2998 MHz. Where it stands out is the number of PCIe lanes available with this CPU and chipset combination. The CPU and chipset combination has 72 platform lanes, allowing for 4x16 slots to be utilized with discrete GPUs or other high bandwidth PCIe cards. And, Box also included a top-notch 1300-watt Seasonic Gold PSU to support those power-demanding cards should you do that. Our only reservation about doing that in this enclosure is that it isn't ideally scaled or provisioned for the significant amount of heat that this CPU and 4 Quadro RTX 5000 video cards might generate under stress. The review machine had a single NVIDIA Quadro RTX 5000 installed, and it didn't take long during benchmarking for fan noise to increase as the CPU and video card started to convert electricity into heat. Box provides a wide range of GPUs you can have pre-installed from both AMD and NVIDIA, and designs like the Quadro RTX 5000 offer enhanced performance for those using CUDA processed code on their system. If you don't need those specific code-related features, you could save a significant amount by installing a more general-purpose GPU, like the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 2080. Probably the oddest choice in this system is the Intel Optane SSD 905P960GB storage, which is a remarkably expensive means to add 960GB, and wastes one of the X16 PCIe slots with an X4 lane device. Why they didn't just use any of the M.2 or U.2 slots were unsure. Why the designers went with Octane technology may be explained by the lack of support PCIe 4.0 on this platform, but you could use RAID 0 on two M.2 connected M.2 NVMe cards and achieve higher performance for a fraction of the cost. We noticed that the Octane 905P isn't a standard option on the box system configuration, so unless you ask for it specifically, most customers won't get it. Another curiosity of this motherboard is that it doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 by default, something that would be very useful to anyone using this machine to process large amounts of data and then store it on an external drive array. Thunderbolt is an odd computer technology, as it can't just be added via a PCIe card unless the motherboard has the underpinning technology in place. Thankfully, Asus did put this tech on the board, and you can install a special PCIe card that unlocks this potential. The other highlight of this system is that the motherboard has two network ports, and they're both 10GBE specification. If they're both connected to a suitable 10GBE switch, and then aggregation is configured, the network bandwidth could be like an NVMe SSD. This feature assumes a very mature network infrastructure, but if the workstation needs to be secured to a centralized server network, then is an optimal setup. The overall experience of the Apex W3 is a good one, with the system booting smartly and performing well with almost any designated task. Often with pre-built systems, we'd complain that it had been pre-loaded with all manner of software junk, but Box provided the machine with what is almost a vanilla install of Windows 10 Pro. We wish more system makers were this restrained. However, given some of the specialist parts in this system, maybe some tactical inclusions might have been preferable. Because none of the Asus utilities designed for the motherboard is installed, or Intel's latest drivers, or those from Nvidia for the Quadro RTX 5000. What with finding and installing all those, and then the tsunami of Windows 10 updates that every new machine must now install, it took some considerable time before this system was entirely ready for use. The only other notable aspect to use is that this system can generate plenty of fan noise when working hard. While being used for menial tasks, the operation is quiet. But once the CPU and GPU are heavily occupied, fan pitch and volume rises dramatically and remains elevated. Thanks for watching, please subscribe for more upcoming videos.